Okay, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the duffalo bar. Uh, I tried to get it matched up as uh, best I could, but you can see as I pan along the difference in the camber area from the center of the bar to the sleeve. Okay, diameter is about the same. It looks like on either end you got probably room for another plate, two plates possibly with the duffalo bar as opposed to the buffalo bar. Also, you have a knurling patch in the middle of both. Uh, the buffalo bar is a little older, uh, so that knurling patch has since worn away. And as you can see, as you pan to the right here, a little bit better area, we have that knurling patch over there uh, where you're usually going to grip. You can see where there's a little bit of chalk on there. It's kind of like where I grip it for bench press. Uh, others may grip it there for squat. You can see the flange on the buffalo bar, and we'll show this later, probably more so in the rack. You'll be able to see it. Um, the flange of the sleeve goes up on the buffalo bar, the duffalo bar is completely flat and we'll see how this factors in when you have it in the rack and you're trying to squat. Alright, so we got the uh, both the duffalo bar on the top and the buffalo bar on the bottom set up uh, as if they're in racks. Now I'll just set them up uh, top to bottom here just so we can kind of get another comparison. We can see, zooming in on the Buffalo bar, you can see how that sleeve kind of pans up a little bit. I don't know why that was designed like that, it's just the way it's designed. And the sleeve on the duffel bar is straight. Now here's where it kind of comes into play, is when you're trying to set the bar in the rack. Now I do recommend that both bars, now they, they lend themselves well to using a 3x3 three three pinned rod style cage. As you can see I have the hook set up where the stopper is on the inside and the reason for that is so the bar kind of cradles nicely uh, into that J hook. You can see right there on the duffel bar even though it is slanted for a guy like me who's got shoulder issues I can uh, comfortably grip the bar out to the edges uh, on that rack. But here's where it does come into play is when putting plates on each bar <coughs> when you're getting ready to squat or do what you, you gotta do as soon as you put a plate on, and I'll just demonstrate with something light, so let's say if you're working up the plates, see on my bottom one here, and this isn't any trickery, it's just what happens with the bar, the bar camber goes immediately bottom side, so you don't have, you don't have the proper area of the bar to go across your back, okay, just to be fair, we'll compare both. I'll put a plate on the buffalo bar as well. Now the plate seems to sit well there, but then when you try to go unless you have it perfectly and you want to kind of fill around with the bar, it's got to sit perfectly or it will kind of go back to top of it. Okay, that's why we recommend doing it like this. Okay, in comparison, we go with the buffalo bar, or the duffalo bar. I'm going to get confused saying that. It sits pretty nicely. It doesn't, it doesn't flop over. Also, that's what may happen when you're trying to get those plates off that bar as they get kind of locked on that that little flange. So a little minor inconvenience there, but as you can see on the duffel bar, no problems whatsoever. And you can just get in here, get your grip, squat, come out, as opposed to having to fill with the bar uh, before you squat with it. Okay, so another idea I was thinking around with was can you get the same benefits from the pull motion as you can the pushes and the bench press uh, and that motion being a rowing motion. In this case, I'll show you what I, the process that I went through. I started to do it with straight weight 
kind of gave away the answer here when I uh, put the band there, but I'll try it with straight weight and I take the bar, set grip. I would recommend using straps um, only because the knurling on this bar is so good it'll cut into you. But that's a good thing, folks. As soon as you take it out, you can see the bar roll out of my hand and I want it to go the other way there. So, no problem solving. Took a little short mini band. You can use a band at any level if you want. It's kind of anchored down the middle. And then we just anchored it with the feet. We got the feet in the position. I just split them in half and then spread the band. Very important that you put it right on that middle marker. So the peak of that camber stays downward. Then you get your grip again. I would recommend taking it out of the rack. If you honestly want to do it on the floor, fine. But I like taking it out of the rack. Take it out and it doesn't roll. The band kind of acts as a ballast against that uh, design of the bar. And then you can do bent over rows. And I'll tell you what, you'll feel it deep in that scapula when you get it. Another option is to use chains. It creates the same effect. You get your little easy loader, whatever you have. I recommend using something with this strapping material, not straight, to, um, not just the straight part of the uh, chain because it'll wear out that nerve. And you do want to care for your bar. And same thing, now you got kind of more of a free bar effect. You don't have any grounding from the band. Same time, you got the benefit of the counterbalance of the chains. And again, you can get your grip. Make sure the chains are straight down. And you got your bed over roll with the duffel bar.